can you all hear me clearly? Got any lag or something like not clear or what? So it's clear lah. Can you hear me? Okay. So okay, first member who haven't write down your name and division, please write down in the chat box below. So for today lesson, we got we teach about module X, which is lifting and handling casualty. And if we have extra time, we will revision back about bandaging, CPR, and choking. Okay. Stretcher and transportation. What is stretcher? Okay, stretcher is a simple little design and can use it when emergency to carry or transport an injured casualty or a dead person. So there totally have five types of stretcher we will show you guys today. Okay, and stretcher actually use moving patient who require medical care. A basic type stretcher must be carried by two or more people. That is impossible, impossible to carry by one people. Lah. So, so the first one is standard stretcher, or we also can call it as emergency stretcher. Usually, you guys can find it in sport ground, like when Hari Sukan or any sport event. Lah. and school so this is an example for the standard structure maybe your school also got uh, if the sponsor so we move to the next one okay so the second structure is orthopedic structure or like it's a noun we call it scoop structure Okay, why we call it scoop structure? Okay, as you all can see in the middle, like a space, right? Actually, it can be opened out to become two. And I will show you guys a video how to use it. But before that, scoop structure is used when to lift a casualty to a structure theory in position which she or he is found with minimal movement of the body yeah. so this is an example video for the scoop structure You only can read the caption uh, because there is no any sound. Okay, as you all can see, it tried to open the structure, but normally it will open by two person in the same time. But this one, two pro lah, he can open one by one.
Okay, as you can see, got four people, right? So this is called in a position like rock roll. So after this topic, I will explain to you guys what is rock roll. Okay. So now we move to the third one, which is spinal board. This type of structure we use it when moving a casualty with a suspected spinal injury. And again, I will show guys a video how to use it. So this is rock roll. Okay, until here only. So, 
Now we move to the next one, which is structure theory. You guys can find it at ambulance. Now you normally can watch in Korean movie lah. In the backside, go open the door, then pull out the this kind, this type of structure to put the casualty. Then bring him or she go to hospital. So actually, there is also have another structure theory to car to carry a uh, best casualty, but it is only have in a special ambulance lah. We call it bariatric ambulance. Inside the ambulance have specialized lifting gear that is capable of carrying very large and heavy patient. Typically designed to carry weight between three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty kg. So this type of ambulance is very rare. So now we move to the last one, which is rescue structure. This kind of structure we only use it for evacuating from places that are difficult to reach, such as cliff, mine, and confined space. For example, like you tajato to a deep hole, and your hand. Leg, papa, even your neck also injured. Then you can move, so it's very hard lah. It's impossible. Also to use other type of structure to take you. So the only structure can save you is rescue structure. Like you can also see in action movie lah, the people jat the jato to the sea. Then go helicopter, bring this kind of structure to carry the casualty in helicopter. Then bring him to the hospital. Okay, general rules for structure. This one very very important lah. You guys better better need to remember before you guys need to use any structure. Okay, first always test. The structure regularly for wear and tear. Make sure they can support the casualty weight. Okay, this means like before you move any casualty to a structure, you have to check for the structure condition first. Um, what I mean is like check for any damage, hole, crack. Or any object that in the structure or letter, the structure tiba tiba pecah while transporting a casualty. So letter oh tiba tiba pecah, then casualty also terjatuh. So it's quite dangerous lah. So and the next one is make sure casualty is secure strap on the structure. Okay. Uh, this mean like after we put casualty in the structure, we need to strap the casualty for more safety. Or later it terjato or tak seimbang, then slide the keluar leh. So we have to secure like ikat lah, no so tight lah. So it got the way lah, but we like this MCO we can show you how to do it and. Let you guys try it. So after this, maybe we got chance. We will give you all to try it. So now we move to the part which carry for one first aider. The three, the fella, right, wrong, ah. Okay. So there's totally have four type of method. For one first aider, which is first human crush method. So it goes step by step, lah. So I will tell you guys how to do it, and I will show you some video for the example how to do it, lah. Sorry for my broken English. Okay.
ठीक है ह्यूमन क्रॉस मेथड फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टेन एंड वर्क वट यू हैव टू डू इज टेन ऑन द कैशिटी इंजर्ड और वीक साइड सेकेंड स्टेप इज ग्रेप ग्रेस मीन इज लाइक होल पगंग पगंग वट यू हैव टू डू इज पास योर आम अराउंड वेस द वे इज लाइक पिंगंग you you put that there pass your arm around the waist then grab the belt waist band or other clothing at the waist to support the casualty like the pegang lah so like or something to support the casualty or not like the later the casualty sangat be then like tak seimbang like sangat sangat So you have to support the casualty for a more stable position. And the last step is ready to move. But make sure that the casualty is ready to move. Then take a small step and walk at the casualty pace. So this is an uh, example for the video lah, for the method. For the example for the footage. So, crowder method. The second method we is crowder method. I know that many people how to do this, so I won't explain much about it. So this very quite easy lah. So we move to the next one. Which is grab method. First step you need to do is crouch behind casualty. Crouch mean like membongko in BM and turn in BC. After you crouch, help the casualty to sit up and cross the arm over the chest. Second step is grab. Grab and walk. Grab mean like grabs, mean like hold hold also lah. Pass your arm under the casualty arm peg. Then grab the grabs the wrist carefully. Pull the casualty backward and squat walk. I can find any perfect video for this method, yeah. So soon after we got chance, we will show it to you guys lah. So now we move to the last method of carry for one for side lah. So this one is piggy method. I believe that many of you guys got watch drama lah. After you saw this piece, you already know how to do it. So if you don't know. You can ask your senior or any of your senior or any or any uh senior member that you know. So we move to the next topic. Nope, no rest for five minutes. Where are carry for 
two either two handle seat. Okay, this credit for two either actually need two first either to do it. Uh. So it call carry for two first either. Two handle seat. First step is squat facing to each other or neither side of casualty. After that, cross arm behind casualty back and grabs the waistband. Second step is hold. Pass your other hand under the casualty knee. Then grabs each other waist. Bring your linker up, arm up to the middle of the casualty tag. So I have the video for this method. Okay, so this is the example. Usually, we don't ask casualty to stand up and sit at our henna. But if the casualty can stand up slowly, just let it be. Okay. So now we move to the next one, which is for and up carry method. First step is sit and grab. See the casualty up, then put their arm across the chest after that squat behind the casualty slide your arm under the armpit and firmly grab the wrist second step ask partner and work together the partner is the person who is first aid also which is your friend your kawan the partner to Squat beside beside the casualty. After that, pass his arm under the tag, taking hold the casualty leg, and you guys start working together. Before you guys rise up, casualty, make sure keep your back straight, straight. Sorry, then rise up casualty slowly and move off. This video is for the example. Okay, so this is the last video for today's lesson.
So there is also have three hand seat, four hand seat, and carrying chair. Okay. So now we are moving to the next topic, which is rock and roll. Okay. First, objective for rock roll. First one to maintain correct anatomical alignment. So it is easy to say it's like perfect line. Like so straight up, perfect. I'm not sure because I found it at Google so because I'm not sure what is that meaning. So second one is to prevent the possible of further prostatic neurologic injury which which mean like a several injury to spine spinal cord or brain and may also include skull or spinal fracture so that one is prevention of pressure source so pressure sore is caused by people who sit in chair or floor for too long period of time. So you sit too long, right? Then you 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 stand up, and then you feel like a pain inside your skin because the like the skin doesn't have any blood, not blood lah. Like I don't know how to explain lah. So this one is quite important. So. And the rock rolling procedure is implemented at various stage of the trauma patient management, including as part of the primary and secondary survey to examine the patient back as part to transfer to a, a structure to apply covered color like uh, the people neck go pata or spinal injured the kind of equi equipment uh, to uh, procedure area care to facialize test physiotherapy and So this is an example of role for transfer a casualty to a structure. As you can see, got one piece inside the head, two in the left or right, and one in the left. This called rock roll. So after this, you guys will have five minutes to rest. After I done this one, so requirement for rock roll. First, at least four people required to assist the rock roll procedure as outlined below. Okay, one person to hold the casualty head, two person to support the chest, abdomen, and lower limbs. An additional person may be also required when rock rolling from a patient who are too obese or have lower limbs injured. So another one, one person to perform the required procedure, exercise of the casualty bag. So any question? So if don't have any question, we will no no end. We will rest for five minutes. I will come back. Not me, uh, other trainer will teach you guys about CPR. So
so for CPR, right, you must know what the CPR stands for. CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So when you're doing, when you exam, exam, right, so the first thing you must do is to greet the examiner. So, um, then after that, you wait for the examiner's instruction. Okay, now after the examiner's examiner give you the the case or situation then you start with the first one danger so for danger right you must tell when you're doing look up look down look right look left and listen feel and smell after that then you must ask the examiner um whether the danger is clear so if you see any um glass Oh, wow. so, but if you see any danger, right, you just clear it. Then after that, you check for response. So you use ABPU. Then you tap the casualty shoulder and ask, um, hello, are you okay? Then you ask the examiner, is there any response? If no response, right, then you pros proceed to shout for help. So you must shout for help loudly. Then, uh, right? Um, Miss Miss in the green shirt, can you call for 999 and repack, report back to me with the ETA and request AED for me? And then after that, you must tell thank you to be polite. So after you do shout for help, hey, wait, wait. for respond, right? If no respond, then you proceed to shout for help. But got re but if got respond, then you proceed to recovery position. So after you shout for help, right, you check for the airway. So you open the airway by using head tilt chin lift. So you ask the examiner, is there any obstruction? If that if there's any obstruction in the airway, right, you use your little pinky to remove the obstruction such as the fish ball or the fish bone. If cannot, just leave it. So after you check the airway, right, you proceed to breathing. So you check the breathing and pulse. You must show the examiner how to do, where is the position of the fingers, face or ear and where to look. So what is the purpose to put your face above the casualty nose and mouth? And, and mouth. Mm, because why you put your cheek at the casualty's nose right is because our cheek is very very sensitive so if the casualty's breathing is very um, weak then your cheek can feel the um, the breathing right and then you must check the pulse uh, by placing your fingers at the you know the previous class they already teach right the carotid pulse so, you must look for normal breathing, not more than 10, second, 10 seconds. Then after that, you ask the examiner got breathing or got pulse or not. So, if no breathing and no pulse, right, then you proceed to, co to compression, to 30 chest compression. So, you must show the examiner how to do so you you must show them the correct hand position the correct compression and uh, your your elbow cannot bend yeah and then your when you're doing chest compression your your chest compression must be at 100 to 120 per minute you, um, You must also know where to do the compression. After that, you must cross. After you do chest compression, you must proceed to res do rescue blow. So you must show how to do the rescue blow. Uh, so when you're doing the rescue blow, right, you must wear the face shield if you got, and then you must pinch the casualty nose and open the mouth of the casualty then you blow blow the rescue blow for not more than one second after you blow then you must release the nose 
after you release and then you pinch again and you blow again so after two two rescue blow right you must proceed to to 30 chest compression so you for one complete cycle is 30 compression to two rescue blow so you, you for the cpr right you must do five cycles five cycles which the ratio of the 30 compression you already know right 30 compressions followed by two two rescue blow so after you do five cycles you must check is there any breathing and pulse so you you go back to check breathing and pulse you, you ask the examiner is there any breathing or pulse if there's no breathing and pulse then you continue with cpr but the exact if the cash the examiner tell you that there's breathing and pulse, then you proceed to recovery position. And before you proceed to recovery position, you must ask for response. If no response, then you do recovery position for the casualty. So when do you stop performing CPR? So you continue CPR until the emergency helps arrive or someone you are someone takes over or you are too exhausted to continue because you know you know right CPR is very exhausting and when you're doing CPR you must do the chest compression for 30 times and then you must immediately proceed to the to ventilation. You cannot stop at when you are doing CPR. And then the last one is the presence of signs of life. Mm. So you must also know about the high quality CPR. The compression rate is 100 to 120 per minute. And the depth is at least 2 inches, which is, which is 5 cm, but less than 2.4 inches, which is 6 cm. Then you must increase intra So you must increase the intrathoracic pressure and directly compressing the heart create blood flow. Then you must allow the complete chest required after each compression. Then after that you must avoid leaning on chest between compression. You don't put your weight on the casualty while you are doing the CPR. Then the last one is to minimize interruption. So let's say that when you are doing CPR, when you are on the street and then you suddenly see someone collapse, and then so you check the danger response all after you. So when you're doing the CPR, right? If someone at the side is telling you this is not the correct way to do CPR, you must just don't need to care about them because you are the you are the one who really knows what are you doing and the correct way. So you don't need to care about them. So after high quality CPR is ventilation. So for the ventilation, which also stands for rescue blow. So you must, the, every rescue blow, you must give approximately one second each causing the chest rise. So you must avoid excessive ventilation, which is too many br breaths or the breathe with excessive force so you must give one breath one breath every six seconds oh my god sorry this one is the compression rate so this one is the car the high quality cpr the so when you're doing the chest compression, you must be at the center of the chest, middle of the nipple line. So like just now, the depth at least 2 inches, 5 cm, but less than 2.4 inches, 6 cm. The compression rate 100 to 120 per minute. Full recoil after each compression. Minimum interruption. After 30 compression, you must proceed to ventilation immediately. You must avoid excessive ventilation. And then the ratio compression to ventilation is 30 to 2. You don't mix it up. Okay.
и фрилеша. Mm. I just give you a brief for this. Okay. So when do you, you use AED? So you use AED okay. to actually for your exam, right? AED is not in your syllabus. You just need to know what is AED. So you must remember always start CPR first, even though AED is available. So I think this one is just for your exam. Oh, I'll pass it to the other trainer. Um, do you don't understand anything about just now what I thought? Any questions? No questions, ah. No questions. Exam, I say what to examine now. Um, meaning, which, which one you say? Exam, I say. So, like, just now I say, right, when you exam, you must greet the examiner. So, if you don't know the rank, then you ask, la. If it's private, so you say, Salamah Sejahtera to private, or? You see, la. Actually, I don't understand what do you mean. Can you say more clearly? Like how you must introduce yourself. Before you do the CPR review, so or uh, when you're doing so you just say Okay, how you introduce to your, yourself to the examiner, right? Okay. Um, first, you will like first you will need to ask the examiner ranking, and then like uh good afternoon, good afternoon, uh like privately, ah, and then there is no need to introduce yourself, right? Okay, like um, how to say it? This like you only need to intro introduce yourself to the casualty. Yeah, like um sir, I'm qualified St. John First Editor. Can I help you? Ah, this is like that only. No need to say like your full name or anything. Fear? Okay. 
Let me see. Yeah, yes. In the syllabus, yes. So the, the casualty you trust, you will trust you. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for bandaging and choking revision. Okay, are you all ready? We'll start in like a few minutes. Let me set up something. Can you hear my voice clearly? Okay, good, clear. Yeah. Uh, let me share screen, start presenting, start now. <laughs> you can see my screen, right? Okay, now we, yeah, this was me, do we need to do this? Oh, for the online, online, online exam, okay, you just tell the examiner your name and division only, that's all, yeah. Just now what I say is last year's syllabus. Mm. But for this year, like the 31 main exam is 100% theory, so there will be no practical or anything. Just answer the question only. Okay, so later I will talk about the exam again, if last week you all missed already. Okay, now, we will start the bandaging section. Oh, and also... If the thing I we revised today is different from last few weeks you learned, just inform me, yeah. Maybe I've mistaken or something. Okay. Before you you like doing the bandaging or something, before and after, you need to ask the casualty four questions. Can I check your capillary review? Can I move your can you move your finger? Do you feel any numbness? Can I check your pulse rate? Okay. How to check the casualty capillary refill? Can, can anyone tell me? How to check the capillary refill? Hello. Don't sleep yet. <laughs> yeah. Press the finger. Okay. Uh, I will revise that like, if, if someone doesn't know. You need to like press the finger until the finger turn pale, like become yellowish. You can try to your finger right now. Like um, turn into ye yellowish already. And then when you release, okay, you need to see um, how much time did the pinkish, your original finger color, Get back to your finger. Okay? I know my English very broken. Okay. And then, if the... Yes, that's on the name. Right. If the casualty capillary reveal, like, the original color turn back in like, very slow, or it totally did not turn back, means that you tie too tight already. Your bandaging is too tight already. Okay, and then ask the casualty can can they move the finger, and then feel any numbness. If they can't move the finger and feel numb, also means that you tie the bandage too tight already. Okay, and then can someone tell me how to check the pulse rate? Pulse rate. I 
Hello? Can someone tell me how to check the pulse rate? I just know what. Which part of your hand? At the finger? At the palm? Or at the wrist? Yes, or wrist. Okay, you need to check the pulse rate and then uh, see the pulse rate is normal or not. Okay. Uh, okay, you need, when you finish the bandage, okay, before you tie the bandage, ask the four question. After you tie the bandage, ask the four question again. Okay, and every 10 minutes after you tie the bandage, you need to ask the four question again. Okay, to make sure. Okay, next. Okay, this is the image, the structure of triangular bandage. You can see the end, the base, and the point. Now this one, no need to explain too much. Okay, these two types of bandaging, there will be arm sling and elevation sling in your slippers. Huh? Okay. Arm sling is to hold the forearm. So if the casualty forearm is injured, you need to tie the arm sling. Okay. And then it will provide the support. It will support the injured forearm, wrist, and the simple rib fracture. Okay, so the arm sling is only for injured forearm, wrist, and the rib fracture. And then Oh, okay. If uh, the casualty, this link is only can use for the casualty that can bend the hand. Because I'm thinking they need to bend the hand, right? If they can't bend the hand, so so you can you can't do anything. Okay. And also, um, never twist the points. Okay. Later I will show you the video. Okay. Um, yeah, just remember the four questions before and after the arm sling. Okay, and then ele elevation sling. Uh, you need to, is to also support forearm in a raised position. Means your hand is at your, uh, at your shoulder. Your hand is on the, on the shoulder. And then the fingertip, uh, yeah. Some kind of that, and then it will control the bleeding of the wound. Okay, because the and yes. sorry, 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 a bit lag. Sorry, yeah. Okay, <laughs> elevation thing is elevate right. So elevate is to control bleeding. When there is a wound in the upper upper arm or anything, okay, it can use in minimize the swelling. Swelling means bunga, and then burn injuries. And this is for complicated rib fracture. Arm sling is for simple rib fracture, and then the elevation sling is for complicated one. And also never twist the point. Okay. Uh, you all understand? Please respond response to me, yeah. Because my English is very broken. Okay. Okay, later I will show you. Later I will show the video. Yeah. yeah, the point is there. You can see the point. I just show you the video, but all good. Yeah, there will be no sound because 
I'm back in the in this. I will just show you how they tie the arm sling and elevation sling. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I will let you all the caption. This is how you tie the arm sling here. Okay, and also the reef note, you all remember the reef note I write, it's tied at the injured side, the injured side shoulder, yeah. Okay, just now someone asked that, where is the point? Okay, and here is, this is the point, and do not twist it. Uh, this is the old syllabus, but we need to follow the new one. So, for the new one is to fold, not like, not this twisting. Yeah, so the twisting, this one is the, the woman that twists the point. The point is, yeah, the point is where the woman is twisting, and it is wrong. Okay, you need to fold it. Here. Uh, you know where you know where is the point already? The point of the triangular bond, the bandage. Okay. You need to. You need to. We explain again. Okay. Explain again. Yeah, here is the point. The woman that tying the the place that the woman is tying is the point. Okay, cannot twist that. Remember. Here, you know where is the point. And this is tying elevation thing. Uh, this is also wrong already. Cannot twist it. You need to fold it. Yeah, this is checking the circulation. Yes, the 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 capillary refill. Yeah, good. Okay. Get back to here. Okay. And here is how to make broad fold and narrow fold. Okay. Of course, narrow fold is like narrow than broad fold. Okay. So, to making of a broad fold bandage is to immobilize or support the arm. Okay, or secure the splint. You know what is splint? Like when someone fractured and there's a, like something, a stick to secure the fracture part. Yeah, there's the splint up. And then narrow fold is for feet. Okay, feet. And whole dressing. Hold the dressing is like, um, like, like okay for the past year past year cadets we take the exam okay after you tie the arm string you need to like tie another narrow fold right and uh, there's there's like hold the dressing like, like around the arm string but 
for this year, there, there won't be any practical, so it's okay. Okay, this brief note. And then you need to, okay, for the brief note, for the arm sling, you need to tie at the same side of the injured side. And then the elevation sling is opposite size. Yeah. And then this scalp, scalp bandage, this head cover, used to also hold the dressing in position. Dressing is means like a roller bandage. Oh, hold on. Wait, I'm sorry, sorry. You can see here, right? Oh, no, we done. Uh, can see already? From which part you cannot see? Eh? The reef not right. From the reef not right. Have you all seen this part? Okay. This part you all can see, right? Okay, good, good. Okay, good. good. Right. Uh, so this is a reef note. So you need to tie an opposite of the injury for elevation sling on. And the arm sling is at the side of the injury side. Okay, scalp bandage. They also used to hold dressing. But I, I show you the dressing. Yes, dressing is like sterile dressing, and plaster things. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. Because I'm using two devices to make sure that my voice is clear. Okay, is there any echo now? Okay, good. Okay, and then this scalp bandage means the bandage on the head is called as head cover. Okay, this is used to hold the dressing position, like the dressing, like just now, the sterile dressing, like the gauze things. Okay, this, like, probably used for when the head is injured or anything. Okay, it can, it can enough pressure to control bleeding. Because it is like enough tight to, to control the, the bleeding. Okay. And then this is for hand and foot cover. Like what is shown in the image. It also to hold the dressing for hand and the leg only. Okay. And then it will not provide pressure. Okay. It is different from the head one because head one can control breathing, but this the pressure is not enough to control. Okay. Nice roller bandage. Yeah, you need to check that the, the roller bandage is um, tight enough to the injured area. Okay. Okay, and then it's, it is better for roller bandage. Okay. The area that you roll is good to be wider than narrow. What is the thing? Maybe it's a mic problem, sorry. Yeah, let me say something. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Repeating on my voice. What happened? Ah? Oh no. Okay. Uh, e even if the my voice is repeating, can you all can you all understand what I say? Yeah. Okay. Good. So okay. Yeah. The roller bandage part, you all understand? Because just now somebody said that there's echo. Okay, then I will proceed to the next one. Okay, this is for last year one. Because last year we need to do practical. Practical, okay, there will be three sections choking, CPR, and bandaging. Okay, so just for your info. Uh, okay, then first, this for last year only one. Uh. This year, there's no practical already. Uh. Just, just need to remind you all. Okay, first, you need to greet the examiner. Like, good afternoon, private. Uh, Lee or uh, Surgeon Lee, Lance Corporal Lee. Uh, okay, and then introduce yourself to Casualty, which is your partner. Like, Sir, I'm qualified St. John First Aider. Can I help you? Yeah, ask his permission and to help him or her. Okay, so for the last year exam, you need to find your partner. And then you will like, break it together like, like you tie him, you tie him the bandage first, and then just take turns now, take turns. Okay, and then you need to ask permission to clear the danger. Because like, when you like, attend to the exam, all of the people like you got the name tag, right? The name tag things like at the chest there. So you need to take it out. Remember to take it out, like remove the danger the watch you also need to remove okay like this kind of things and remember the belt also cannot remove ah. belt cannot remove because it can it can secure the pelvis okay and then before like as usual you need to ask the four question can you move your finger do you feel any numbness um can i check your capillary refill can I check your, check your pulse rate? Okay. And then start bandaging. The examiner will ask you to tie either arm sling or elevation sling. Like either one. Uh, won't be two. Like, okay, either your partner taking arm sling, then you taking elevation sling. Or it will be like, you taking arm sling and your partner taking elevation sling. Okay, and then after you tie the bandaging, the sling. Okay, and then you need to tidy up, make sure everything is neat. Okay, and then ask the four question again. And the most important part is to untie the reef notes. Okay, because if you can't untie the reef note, it will be considered as fail. Okay, so you need to make sure that your reef note is, is correct. Okay. I think that's all for bandaging. What the hell what is this choking? Wait, choking. Okay, choking. The the correct spelling is C H O, no C, K I N G. Yeah, I typed that before. Yeah, this one. Choking, not choking. Okay. Okay, you all need to like rest for a few minutes. I just proceed. This is the last slide already. Slide already. You all want to rest or anything? If you want, if we can rest for two hours, two minutes. Two minutes, not hours, ah. Huh? 
two minutes or three minutes like that. Okay, if not, I will be just proceed. Okay, now it's choking part. Okay, choking is means that like there is obstruction in the breathing canal, like something is blocking inside the blocking the oxygen from going out the lungs or or go inside your lungs. Okay, just like there is something blocking a traffic jam already. Okay, and then there will be two types of choking: severe choking and mild choking. Severe choking is the serious choking, and mild is the non-serious one. Okay, so to treat the mild choking, you can't do anything. Okay, so before you treat the the casualty that is choking, suffering choking, okay, you need to ask the ask the casualty like, um, sir or madam, I'm qualified and job press leader. Can I help you? If someone like, especially woman like, especially woman. Like do want your help because you're a boy. They do want you to touch them. You can't like force yourself to touch to help them. You just stand aside only, and then stand aside and wait. Wait, their mouth choking becomes a real choking, and naturally they will you ask you to help out. Okay, and then for mouth choking, if the casualty uh, allowed you to help them, you can't do anything also. You just need to encourage them to cough it out. Okay, like um, try to encourage them, like, sir, can you cough it out? Sir, can you cough it out? And then just, just encourage them only, yeah. Okay, and then if you can ask them to remove the obvi obvious obstruction. Okay, for example, a person is eating something and then the fish ball stuck already. But like the mouth still got a lot, a lot of noodles. Ask them to like remove all the noodles from the mouth. Okay, you know, you get what I mean. The obvious obstruction. Like the obstruction that you can remove it easily. Okay, to minimize the obstruction, okay? For severe choking, okay, all you need to do is put your strongest arm around the casualty belly or stomach. Okay, and then one of your legs put between the casualty leg, like left leg and right leg, and then you put between them. Because like for the casualty that suffer from severe choking, you will like suddenly turn unconscious, like suddenly bang sang. So you need to like, like always stay in, in guarding position, like prevent them from falling, just falling down like that. Okay, okay, and then for severe choking, back abdomen, back row, and then five abdominal thrusts. Okay, use. Okay, for the how to differentiate the severe choking and mild choking. Before you treat the casualty, you need to ask them that, sir or madam, can you breathe? Can you talk? Can you cough it out? If all of them like the casualty can do it, can try to do it. So they will be considered as mild choking. If one of them like suddenly like one of them like uh cannot breathe, means they severe choking. Even the casualty can breathe but cannot talk. It's also considered as severe choking. Okay? And then uh yeah, you need to stay at the position to support the casualty and then fight back blow. And then, bye bro, like, pop, pop, pop. Okay, uh, for someone, like, it would be, how to explain it? Um, okay, when you, when you do the five bad blow on the casualty, um, just, like, hit and off, hit and off, hit and off. Okay, just, like, don't massage the... Casualty. Just hit and off, hit and off, hit and off. Okay? You understand or not? <laughs> Can you understand? For oh, the back blow part. Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay. 
Okay, somebody know. Okay, good. Uh, but yeah, I will show you the video. I mean, my hand. I will show you my hand. How to do it? Uh, I stop presenting first. My God, I pitch sound. Okay. Uh, there's somebody, somebody there to sell. Okay. Can you all see my head? Oh my God, the head is sound. Okay. So, for the back blow, your hand need to in the curve shape. Need to in the curve shape. Okay, and then this here is all flat. Ah. You need to like flat. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, because someone like, someone is, don't understand. So I need to explain. It's not fair. Ah, okay. Okay. Imagine this hand, this my hand. Okay. It's the back. And then you cannot like just rub like that. Just, just hit and off, hit and off, hit and off. Okay. Not like rub, like hurt, hit, hit, cannot like this. Just hit and off, hit and off. Okay? You all understand? Understand, ah? Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Pais it, pais it. Just now I really left already. Uh, sorry, yeah, just now I left already. So all your attendants, you all have this already. So can you all write your name and division in the chat box again? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Just now I accidentally left already. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, okay. Now we will... <laughs> Okay, now let's back to the. Present screen. Thank you. Okay, back to the talking parts. Just a few more minutes. Okay, this is the back blows. Okay, and then yeah, you need to look at the second second picture. This is how your hands support the casualty. Okay, if the casualty like stand too straight already, and then it makes you like cannot do the back blow. Okay, you need, you can ask the casualty that like, sir or madam, can you bend down a bit? Ah. Yeah, something like that. Okay, now it's abdominal thrust. Okay, uh, this is same as what you not know, support like. After you do the five back blows, you need you need to like ask the casualty again the trick question again. Can you talk? Can you cough it up? Hey, sorry. Can you talk? Can you cough it out? And then can you breathe? Ask again. Okay. After the five back blow, if still cannot, you need to just just proceed to the abdominal thrust. Okay. Like how just what I say, stand behind the casualty. Put the arms around the upper part of casualty abdominals. Like make sure the bending or well for us. Yeah, ask the casualty the best a bit. Yeah, one leg between two legs. The casualty legs do not work, sorry. And then okay. Abdominal trust, I think I need to show you all my head again. Sorry. 
Okay, my hand again. Hi. Okay, so for the abdominal trust. Okay, so this is my hand. Four. And then just hold like a fist. Okay, and your thumb is inside your hand. Like got inside the hand. And this and here will be flat. Okay, and then two finger above the belly button. The hole at your stomach. And then push, just like that, push, push, push. Okay? Like that, push, push, push. And then push five, like one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, Okay, now back to business screen. Start. <laughs> okay, a few more only, a few more only. This is for revision only, yeah, okay. Abdominal trial. Oh, this okay. Okay, okay. Imagine like suddenly you have the casualty, like five back blow, abdominal trial, and suddenly the patient, the casualty, bangs on already. That's only four, and then uh, because you already support already, ma. So what you have to do is like slowly put the casualty down. Oh my god. Uh, um, how to explain uh, for this guy? Okay. Henry Tony. Okay. Uh, this is just a look. Kaiser, Kaiser. I will just draw here. And right. Okay. Imagine you can see my see the screen right. Oh my god, it's all black. I change the colors. Okay, you can see right the head, the stick man. You can see the stick man mode. Okay, this is you. Oh my god. You and then the casualty is here. Yeah, you understand the situation now. You understand the situation. Hello, okay, and then the casualty suddenly fall down, like when turn unconscious. And all you have to do is your hand, like stuck between the casualty armpit. Like just um, your hand is, is your, both of your hands is under the casualty armpit. And then you slowly put it down and let the casualty lie down. Okay, can I, can I have something like that? Okay, and then your leg, oh holy, okay. Sorry, 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 Okay. This is your leg, ah. This is your leg, ah. And then your hand is still support the casualty. Okay, and then your leg need to support the casualty back. And slowly let the casualty lie down. And at last, the casualty lie down already. Okay. Something like this. Okay. Can understand us? Okay. If you can understand, tell me. Uh. Okay, uh, okay, good. Whew. Okay, and then this, after the casualty lie down, 
Okay, you need to check the mouth. See the fishbowl. Where is the fishbowl? Okay, if to you can try to remove the fishbowl by using your pinky finger, like scoop it out. If cannot, you can use your pinky finger and your thumb together. Okay, do like the, your whole hand like like stuck inside the casualty mouth, like very disgusting, you know. Just use your pinky finger and your thumb only. Do your whole hand go inside the mouth, okay? Okay, and then if the casualty got breathing, okay, and then you need to do CTR, like danger, D-R-A-S, easy, D danger, uh, left, right. Of course, there might not be danger, but you need to remove the name tag, watch, specs, like that. You need to remove. Okay, and then what? do what you do at the CPR. I'm sure that you all is already um, familiar with that. DRS, ABC, and that. Okay, and then you only do 30 chest compression. compression. Let's do the compression. Press, 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 press. Okay, if only there is no breathing, you need to do rescue blow. But um, sometimes when you blow the rescue blow, you will like blow the obstruction into deeper, deeper parts, deeper, deeper place lah. So you know, you know how to you know how to do it, yeah. yeah. I think this one I explain not so clear. Right. I explain again. If the casualty got breathing, that is chest compression. No breathing, that is chest compression, and rescue blow. After rescue blow, then you need to check for the traction. Can, can I? <sighs> okay. I think this is uh, the last part. Okay, good. Recovery position. This is recovery position. Okay. And then, I just need to draw for you this one. Okay, I explained the, the recovery position first. Yeah, this all is like something just same as this one. Uh, you need to uh, raise the, okay, you need to raise the casualty. Oh, okay, wait a Okay. Nice, nice. Okay, and then you need to raise the casualty leg. Raise the casualty leg up first, like um, the. Okay, you are free. Yeah, I need to draw this one. Hey. Okay. Uh. Okay, this is you, and the casualty is here. All you have to do, wait, wait, wait. okay, is this is casualty, right? And you is here, here is you, ah. And then you raise the leg like this. Okay. Later, we raise the leg like this. Holy, holy, holy. We raise the leg like this. Wow, so many one. Okay, okay, okay. And then, one hand here and another hand here. You do like this first, okay? And then pull the, like push the casualty to your side. Don't, don't push to the end, the opposite side. No. Push to your side. So the casualty recovery position, the face will be facing you, not to the opposite side. Okay, because you imagine you are um, treating the patient on the mountain and then you push the, the casualty to the opposite side and then the opposite side there is just the cliffs and then you push the casualty down. Like something like that, I know. So like push to your side is more safe. Okay, and, and also the casualty is here, right? Already recovery position. This patient already recovery position. 
do not cross cross over them. Like walk, walk like this. Do not just like your leg cannot cross over them. Okay, this is not polite, ah. Uh. Okay. You all understand? Okay, yeah. My drawing not bad, right? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hey, no pick again. Okay. okay. You all understand, ah? Uh? This is now the statement things. Understand? Okay, good. Make sure you all understand. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I can go to the artist. Maybe. Okay. Last tips. Um, do not place the casualty. Do not like. Do not put the casualty into this position when there is suspect spinal injury and neck injury. Because when you like simply push them, yeah, the injury will be getting worse. Okay? And then, last, last, last one is why we need to do recovery position. It is quite in important, eh? Okay, we need to do recovery position. Of course, it's to clear the airway, to open the airway. Um, even, even though the obstruction is still there, but recovery position can use it in, in many ways. Okay, so like CPR, CPR you also use recovery position, right? Like after everything, like actually the casualty got breathing, got pulse, and you need to do recovery position. And recovery position can clear the airway, open the airway, so the breathing can go uh, slowly, something like that. Okay, and then another one is to prevent, okay, when you're sleeping, right? When you're facing the sky, the ceiling, okay, and then your saliva or the vomiting things that like flow back to your flow back to your throat. So when you do, when you are doing recovery position, okay, so you are facing like left, either left or right. So your saliva or your vomiting will be like flow out from your mouth. You get what I mean? Okay, I think yes. Oh yes. That's all I think.